I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I have a Hello and welcome to another episode of Fibber's Closet. Um, this time a little different. Well, I hope they're all a little different. Um, this time we're looking at the uh, TC1 from Heathkit, the tube tester I bought um, very recently. And I bought it because, not because I wasn't happy with my uh, little Syncor Mighty Might 5 which I really love because of its size and, and capability, but um, because I needed a tube tester that would take uh, old sockets like for 75 tubes or 80s. Um, and uh, the uh, Mighty Might does not do that. So I got myself a Heath kit. Heath was an interesting company um, founded in 1911 as an aircraft company by a guy named uh, Edwin Edward Heath and they sold the uh, Heath parasol as a kit in 1926 and unfortunately Heath died in an airplane crash in 1931. Uh, the company was purchased at that point in 1935 by a guy named Howard Anthony and uh, he focused the company instead of on kit airplanes on making accessories for small planes. And they survived the war and after the war Anthony decided that electronics was the big thing, big coming thing, uh, sparked by his buy and sparked him to buy a warehouse full of uh, leftover parts from World War II. Um, they did get into electronics. They introduced their first kit in 1947, the O1 oscilloscope. Cost 50 bucks. Two years later, they introduced the TC1 tube tester, which is what I have now. I got involved with Heath kits uh, years ago. Uh, the first one I built was a, um, a voltmeter VOM. Uh, the last one I built was probably one of the last Heath kits you could buy, which was an H89 computer in the uh, late 70s, uh, probably 79 or so. Had a couple of Zenith um, Z80s, as I recall. Um, wrote an article for it on the assembly of the computer. Uh, I enjoyed that for quite a few years. Finally gave it to my son. Don't have a clue where it is now. This is the Heathkit TC21 I got. Um, I got it um, for the reasons that it has the old-fashioned sockets in the upper left and can test uh, tubes made in the 30s. Uh, the roller, much to my delight, is in uh, good shape. Uh, it's, it doesn't have everything, but I've got all the supplements for the tester. But it still rolls, pretty amazing. Um, um, the instructions, I got a full set of instructions. He, nobody made uh, assembly instructions better than Heath. Uh, they did just a fantastic job with the uh, written instructions and most of all with the illustrations showing uh, where everything went. Uh, just the best, the best available. And these are the uh, supplemental tube sheets that I got with it as well. So I was happy to have that. The uh, switches down in the bottom, the selector switches, are all kind of gummy. Uh, but it's all there. It has all the original knobs. Um, everything is complete, and I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to take it apart, though. I know the, the knobs and switches all need to be cleaned out, and I'll check the uh, caps as well. The tester has a wooden base. Um, came with, at one point, this one had a... Uh, uh, cover on it apparently. You can see where the hinges used to be and latch. Uh, long gone. I don't know if uh, it came with a cover originally or not. It's easy to disassemble a screw in every corner. In this case the uh, screws are all different. They've been replaced at times in the past and they don't match anymore. I'll see if I can come up with some that look more like one another. 
Uh, inside the case it looks good. Uh, the only problem that I can see is there's a missing corner brace. Uh, one of the corners of the um, of the chassis doesn't get screwed down because the corner brace is missing so I'll replace that. Inside it's clean uh, and uh, relatively unmolested as Uncle Doug likes to say. Um, so everything looks pretty good at the initial glance. There's only one old waxy cap in there um, and it actually tested good. I just replaced it anyway because that's what I do with old waxy caps. I don't trust them. This one isn't being strained very much though. As you can see the rotary switch looks pretty gummy. All the switches look about like this. Uh, and here's the collection of four uh, carbon comp resistors that I'll have to, to, to take a look at for sure. Tucked up under the uh, power transformer is the selenium rectifier. You can just make it out there. Um, that tests good, so that can stay. Uh, we'll take a look at that transformer in a little bit. It's, it's interesting, to say the least. And here is the line adjustment potentiometer. It's actually a 10-watt rheostat. Don't see those anymore. Um, it's to adjust to make sure that the voltages that are being passed around in the circuit are appropriate for the line voltage. So you center the meter using this, this rheostat. Um, trouble is with modern voltages, this thing was built when voltages were somewhere between 110 and 115 volts. And you know, right now in my house, I get 123, 124 with no problem. So you have to turn the rheostat all the way down. Um, you know, it's, so it doesn't quite center anymore, but that's probably okay. In close examination, I did find a, a cold joint on the rheostat, which fortunately is easy to repair, but it was the only one. Otherwise, it was a well-built kit. So to work, I covered the uh, scrolling uh, paper with uh, plastic wrap and then uh, began cleaning those, those uh, switches, that sw bank of switches on the right. Uh, I really didn't want to get oil spots on the, on the paper roll. I pulled one end of all the carbon uh, comp resistors and measured them. Um, mostly they're precision, silver and gold band, uh, just one or two brown bands. Um, so I measured them all and uh, turns out there were four culprits, four that were uh, not in spec. These guys are right here. So they were replaced. It's amazing how much smaller a quarter amp or quarter watt resistor is today than it used to be. Um, I didn't have exactly the right combination of precise uh, resistances, resistances, <laughs> resistors, so I had to make some up, but I came uh, very close. I'll show you. I sh I'll show you the results. Here's a table showing the uh, carbon comp resistors and one wire wound, um, and the precisions. Uh, for example, TC71 was supposed to be 360 at 20%. It was actually 500. They had all drifted up as carbon comp resistors do. Um, so I ended up replacing four of them for the 360. For example, I got within 324, and that was for 20% precision. That was fine. For the 820 ohm resistor, I got to 824. And for the 3600 ohm, I got to 3660, so pretty good overall. So after cleaning it all up, um, I tried it out and it worked worked a charm. This uh, this is a Type 75, I think, tube, and before I cleaned it up, it tested bad on one of the the uh, diodes, and now it's testing good, just the way I want it. Here's the schematic of the tube tester, and I ended up replacing these four um, carbon, carbon comp resistors. I also forgot that I had to replace the uh, neon bulb, the shorts indicator bulb. It, it was broken uh, and in the, still in the socket, but broken in the socket. 
Over here on the left is the uh, primary of the power transformer, and right there is that rheostat that adjusts line voltage. Um, it's a little off-center now. Uh, but as you can see, this emissions tester is fundamentally a giant transformer with switches to route things to everywhere. Pretty simple stuff. Anyway, cleaned up the case, mounted it back in the case, and uh, all is well. I'm very pleased with the way it works, and I'm sure it's going to last me for a long time. See you next time. Be safe out there.